Well, why do we bother to study chemistry? It seems rather difficult, but we are composed of chemicals. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, a little over $100 worth of chemicals. That's, that's what we're made of. And so, yeah, it is important. One example that's in the news lately is lead. Okay. This chemical affects red blood cells and it gets involved with the calcium, irritates the brain tissue, and in children, it's uh, a cause, one of the causes of retardation. To understand chemistry, you've got to start, uh, understand the atom. In the core are the protons, which have a positive charge, neutrons, which have no charge, and then spinning around in an orbital at high speeds are the electrons with a negative charge. Isotopes are atoms that have an imbalance in neutrons. These are really exciting um, substances because we use them in medicine and science. Uh, for example, if someone comes in with a chief complaint of a thyroid problem and a scan is conducted, we can see, if you look at this example, the dark colors show low energy and the warmer colors, orange and red, are going to show high activity. And we can sometimes tell if there's a tumor there because tumors are very greedy. They're going to absorb the isotope and they're going to just glow with energy. We can also see darkened areas like in the brain scan below. The blues are sh showing areas where the brain is not very active. And a PET Positron, uh, positron emission tomography scan can show this cellular activity. In a PET scan, we can uh, inject a, a substance that has the isotope. Now it's encapsulated, and so it's not as harmful as it might seem, and it's called contrast in, in the workforce. And this contrast is going to move throughout the body. And it, the radioactive isotopes are going to bind to uh, certain cells that are active, and then they're going to emit a uh, energy that's picked up by the machinery. These are called radioactive tracers or radio tracers moving throughout the body. And there's a tumor, and that active tissue there is going to absorb and bind to the radioisotope here in the bloodstream. We use a fluorodeoxyglucose, and so it's a glucose molecule bound up with a isotope. It's going to bind to the tumor cells, and now the, uh, we're going to have these positrons emitting energy, and there you have it. It's picked up by the machinery, and we can see on a um, screen the tumor. Nuclear medicine is a little different because we use gamma or xenon to show cellular activity. This is the nuclear med machinery in um, Memorial Medical Center. Uh, it's um, state of the art, really impressive there. We don't just use um, isotopes for detection, we also use them for treatment because these isotopes are going to kill rapidly growing cells. I mentioned that cancer cells are active, they're greedy, and they're going to absorb the uh, high energy radiation. One thing I really appreciate from working at Memorial is the, in the old days, okay, if, let's say if a person came in with a prostate cancer, then they might lose part of their rectum and their urinary bladder because the, uh, the, uh, photons would be striking and just hitting all sorts of organs. But now, if you see the lower right, I like that, and it may not make sense to you, but you see the prostate in the middle. This is a view looking down through the feet, and um, there's the two femurs on either side of that red area. And so the machinery is going to target, and often the victim is draped so that the beam of energy just strikes the, the intended target. Radioisotopes are used to kill um, bacteria, sterilize equipment, like in, the, in surgery and uh, dental areas. And if a food is irradiated, it's safe, all right? We have a big, um, people getting upset about this, but 
the nature of radioactive material is it, it emits energy very quickly and it's gone. Radioisotopes used for dating fossils. I don't work with fossils. But uh, um, the carbon-14 that's uh, introduced is going to decay over time into something called nitrogen-14. And this decay rate is so predictable. Okay, CT scans. A CT scan is just, this is basically an x-ray. And it's a series of x-rays, and a computer is going to uh, make a composite. And so the CT scan just shows a snapshot of the tissue, like a, a, a bone fracture. But it's not going to show tissue activity, such as a, a PET scan would do. Chemistry, uh, yeah, we've gotten into the atoms. We understand the protons, neutrons, and electrons. A molecule is when we have different uh, atoms bonded together. We we'll call those compounds or elements. Uh, the the bonds are the form of energy that um, we all use. Like for example, if you're eating a candy bar, you're going to strip off those bonds and turn them into energy. There's different types of bonds. Uh, one is type is called ionic, and I call this the um, dating. Uh, bond because it has to do with opposites. Atoms have these energy shells and sometimes they're going to give or or take an electron to become stable. And here's an example. Sodium which is Na, if you see below, NH positive, has a positive charge so it has too many protons. Chloride has too many uh, uh, electrons so it's negative and so they give something to each other. And, uh, for example, sodium plus chloride is salt. One of the reasons why salt is so common in the world is because of this incredible attractions. Opposites attract. So next time you're at a restaurant, you can't think of anything to say, and you've got this person across from you that you maybe uh, are falling in love with, just say, hey, salt. You know, salt is one of the most amazing common things on the planet. It's in our blood. It's, on, it's in uh, the soil. And it's because these opposite attractions. And you know, you and I are kind of different. And uh, I feel something strong, a strong bond taking place. All right, well, let's say that date works out. And now you have marriage. And I think marriage is like a covalent bond because you have to share everything. You share your, uh, your electrons. In this case, like oxygen. When we write oxygen, we write O2. That's because O and O often share electrons. Same with hydrogens, H2. We have something called water, which is a, a weak covalent bond or hydrogen bond between atoms. And so that's why water is a fluid. And I call this the junior high uh, sort of romance because these bonds are so weak. You know, they, uh, they, they form and then they break and they form and they break. Just like in junior high, these kids, uh, they fall in love one day, and then, oh, now the next day they hate that person, they love someone else. And so that's the way water is. It's, it's a fluid because these bonds are always breaking and reforming. The properties of water, we, we take this for granted, water, but it absorbs about one calorie per gram of water. And what that means is when we sweat, when we sweat, that that water on our skin is absorbing enormous amounts of energy from us and that's why we can we can live in the hottest deserts in the world as long as we can drink water and sweat it um, it just keeps cooling us off another neat thing about water is that when it freezes instead of becoming like super dense it it expands and it floats and we have um, and that way um, life can live underwater even during the winter All right, that's it for the chemistry intro.